that roof up there was where Oasis filmed the video for their debut single, Supersonic. It's as if some of the people around here are unawares. Don't get me started on recognition of, of, of comic writing and uh, performing, uh, you know, at large in this industry because, you know, I, Is that I, I got, well, I'm just saying back off because I do have, uh, you know, people don't, if people make you cry, if a performance makes you cry or someone shouts or has a, some sort of th something wrong with their body, mm. People seem to find that uh, tremendously skillful and moving, and it is. Mm. Well, but if someone makes encompassed in the theory of everything, exactly. Uh, but if someone makes you laugh, it's like, oh yeah, that's nice, but where's the skill? Or you know, I don't know. There's, there's, yeah. a, there's, a, there's a, it's, it's treated as lightweight. And, and without I, going into, we know the skills of comedy. We know what you know. Yeah, it's why, hard. why is the best Oscar never go to comedy performance? It really, very rarely does. Yeah, um, and you know. There we go. Yeah. We all have our crosses to bear. I, I'm sure I would have won an Oscar before now if that hadn't been the case. I wouldn't wholly doubt it. Um, the doyen of British comedy, Armando Iannucci. Yeah. I saw an interview with him in the last year at some point, and people were saying, what are you most proud of, favourite sketches you've done, all the work he's done, obviously. And he said his favourite sketch was the one from the Armando Iannucci shows with the dinner party and the conversational pieces in the pie, bits of paper, the two protagonists in that scene were Iannucci and yourself. Yeah, I didn't know that was his favourite thing. Yes. Ah, that's great. I mean, it does make me think, why hasn't he given me a job for about nine years if that's his favourite sketch? <laughs> which, which brings me to my supplementary question. Yeah. Why the radio silence from Iannucci? <laughs> why? Well, I mean, I'm very pleased about that because, I mean, the, the, the one moment in my television career that's followed me around on a daily basis and I get, I would say, you know, a, a daily shouts in the street of Dan mm. from Alan Partridge, mm. uh, if you know that scene, yeah. which I'm not really actually in, but obviously I played Dan. Mm. Um, and, I, and I'm really proud to be part of a little bit of television history, partly by just by being in Alan Partridge, because it was so good. When you get a phone call from Armando Iannucci, is that when you know you've made it in British comedy? Yeah, I mean, there are, there are a couple of people, I think, out there who are really special. I think Chris Morris has that sort of level of specialness, although he doesn't, he's not as prolific. Uh, Charlie Brooker has become mm -hmm. really quite special. When I left drama school, I wanted to go into theatre and play great Shakespearean roles because I thought that's how you became a great actor. After five years of trudging around this country of ours and having a great time, it slowly dawned on me that it's who you work with. Um, and that has been the sort of the guiding principle ever since. Try and work with the best and the most interesting people and Armando would be right at the top of that tree. I didn't know whether to bring this up, but I felt uh -oh. it quite pertinent right. to do so. I'm scared now. Um, there's a famous story of you introducing yourself to Robert De Niro by saying, Hi, I'm Robert De Niro. Yeah. Um, has that stopped you approaching people you want to say hello to now? Or have you got a new game plan when you introduce yourself to people you admire? No, because that wasn't the first time I did something that stupid. <laughs> um, when I was in a play uh, in the West End, I saw a woman on the other side of the road who I knew, I knew her, I definitely knew her, and I ran over and I said, hi, and she was American, and she said, hey, and I said, it's your, you, we, didn't we do a, we worked together, and we worked together, didn't we do a play at Saul's, you're, you're Meg Ryan, aren't you? She said, yeah, I said, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I had never met her before, no. <laughs> but so, it was Meg Ryan? Yeah, it was Meg Ryan, oh yeah. yeah. She wasn't amused <laughs> at being asked whether she'd done a play at Salisbury <laughs> Playhouse <laughs> with me. Uh, but you know, uh, it didn't stop me. I've walked into a, a backstage of a play and saw Madge from Neighbours and gone, hey, hey, oh, you're Madge from Neighbours, and, and carry on going. And, and Charleston. Yeah, and Charleston. And Charleston. So I, I will do it again. Yeah. But the De Niro one was a brilliant, it was actually in the loop. Uh, Armando's film yeah. in the Tribeca Film Festival and uh, he was there and I said I've got to go and say hello to Robert De Niro and I steeled myself, walked over and said hello, I'm Robert De Niro <laughs> and he said no, I'm Robert De Niro and I said I know. <laughs> but my theory in those situations when 
uh, and it happens to us all. You see someone you admire. Yeah. You want to let them know that, but you don't want to spend loads of time being, if I may use the technical parlance, an arse. Yeah. And so I think what you have to do is you have to go in, introduce yourself. Yeah. You've thought about this in some more, detail. Yes, for more than 20 minutes. Right. Um, you have to say, hello, my name is... Robert De Niro. <laughs> Uh, that's where you're always going wrong. Oh, God, you know, I've got a new script. You have to say, hello, my name is Stephen. Yeah. I really admired this film you were in. Yeah. So they go, well, thank you very much. It's very kind of you to say. The kicker is, you have to instigate the goodbye. I see. You have to get in there quick. The thing is, when, but when you're nervous, and I get this very occasionally, someone will come up to me, bless them, shaking mm. with nerves. I don't know why. It only happens once every couple of years. But yeah. someone who's obviously quite, you know, uh, and, and what happens is they come up and go, hello, my name's Lord. I'm really, bye. And then they go. Yeah. And you think that's, you know, and that's what I feel I'm like when I meet people who are, you know, very yeah. excited. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a tough one. Everyone loves being told that they're admired. It's, uh, you know, any Stephen, actor. Stephen Mannion. You are a funny guy. The Green Wing stuff is excellent, the hospital stuff. I tell you what you get quite a lot of is, hello, oh, you're the That's actor. That's how I get moving them. <laughs> That's not, That's not quick, how you do it. Too quick I get, hello, you're the actor, my wife thinks you're great. Okay, okay. I get that quite a lot. Okay. Or two people come up and one goes, oh, hi. Oh, God, I think, you know, I really enjoy your stuff. And the other person goes, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, you know, okay. <laughs> There's a video of you and there are many videos of you in, in different places busking House of the Rising Sun right. for charity. Yeah. Is it true that all actors are frustrated musicians and vice versa, or is that a bit of a non-truth? I think a lot of actors are frustrated musicians, yeah. I think there's something about music that is inherently cooler than almost anything else. But is, is there a case to argue that the real geniuses of acting aren't Alec Guinness, Al Pacino, Meryl Streep, but rather those who successfully combine being a musician and an actor throughout their life, such as Zoe Deschanel or Tom Waits, for instance. Well... Justin Timberlake. Moss Def. Courtney Love. Beyonce? No. I mean, David Bowie acted, mm -hmm. Mick Jagger acted. Well, in inverted commas. Well, you know, they did. Mm -hmm. Robson and Green released an album. I think they all should have stuck to their day jobs, right. is what I'm trying to say. Frank Sinatra. Yes. Young at Heart with Doris Day. Yes. In the wee small hours. Both. But a better singer than an actor. Okay. But you know, uh, some people can do both and they're really annoying. Mm. I mean, leave some space for the rest of us less talented people. Right. That's my message to them. So do one thing or the other. Do one thing and stay out of my face. <laughs> when you are on the stage, yeah. or doing a, a comedic play, yeah. or on the television, yeah. we're led to believe that off stage these people can sometimes be a bit morose. Yeah. Or, I've not found you that way. Right. I've That's because I'm high on tranquilizer. <laughs> can I just say, uh, in closing, it has been a pleasure Thank speaking you. to you. All the best. I'm away to get the tube. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>